Welcome to the Cult of Domesticity podcast. Two best friends tell each other stories about history, true crime, and other shenanigans. I'm Courtney. I'm Ashley. And today we have a guest. Hello. This is Michael. Michael and I... I th- it's weird calling you Michael, but in every media thing I have you in, it's Michael from grad school. Everyone calls, like, it's all Michael. I know. I, everyone in Ohio calls me Mike, though, so you can call me Mike if you want. Does that mean I have to call you Michael since I'm not in Ohio? <laughs> well, you're north of the Ohio River. That seems to be the dividing line on my nicknames. So I would say north of the Ohio River, it's okay to call me Mike. If you're south of the Ohio River, you should just refer to me as Michael. Yeah, I always struggle finding you my phone. I'm like... And it's always very, it's like your full name too. So it's very proper. Oh, wow. Well, because there was at least three mics maybe at Miami. With oh, yeah. You were a mic heavy organization. Like there were mics as professors too. So we were just like, oh. You never knew what to do. Yeah. I forgot where I was sometimes. I know. It's just hear a mic and everyone turns. Like even if yeah. your name's not Mike, you just everyone. Office doors opening all down the hallway, <laughs> popping out like meerkats. Even students just popping up. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you ready for my spooky story that happened, my real life story that happened to me yesterday? Oh, I love spooky stories. Yes, please. So I was walking Schnitzel, and it's a nice mile loop. I was about three-fourths of the way done, and there's like another parking area there, kind of like a nice marker. And I'm letting Schnitzel sniff because there's like a picnic table and all that stuff and smells. It, and I'm listening to podcasts because that's what I do when I walk her, which sometimes is a mistake because they get spooky they're about murder and I'm in the and all of a sudden, um, like, through the, the break, I hear, like, a baby crying? And I'm in the woods. Mm-mm. Like, across the road, there's Red just line. more woods. There's no Mm-mm. houses. Like, some some areas on the path you can, like, see into people's backyards. Not there. And it was just one kind of cry. It was like, wah, wah. Just, like, yeah. over and over? Yeah. There was, like, if there was a bear, I was, like, trying to debate if it was an animal but I'm just, I'm like, sitting there and, like, Schnitzel's not freaked out. I'm I'm freaking the fuck out. I paused my podcast and kept the headphones in to trick them so they don't think I know. <laughs> <laughs> playing mind games with whatever recording is out there. That's good. good whatever call. is out there, because I can't see <laughs> further up the road. That's the thing. Like, where it was, I can't see up there. And so I, like, I kind of let her finish, like, sniffing. And then I just kind of, like, what, as soon as we got past, like, there's, like, a bathroom building and that area of the woods couldn't see me i just was like schnitzel you're not stopping to smell anything i got out of there i checked my tires i checked under my car as i got up to it i was like nope not gonna be murdered today not (laughs) gonna be presence of mind that i envy by the way because i would not have had the thought to be like let me make sure my tires aren't popped i would have just been like nope nope leaving bye wait guess what my dad said you'll love this what he goes, you, you just left a baby out there? <laughs> it's not a real baby! It's not a baby! Not a no baby. baby is there. No. He goes, okay, what if so- someone abandoned the baby? And I was like, okay, first of all, not deep enough into the woods for that shit. <laughs> and <laughs> So if they did, they did a shit job of it, is what you're getting at. <laughs> and dude, there's probably, like, there's churches around there, so you can do the... I mean... Ohio's it's one a thing- sanctuary state, right? You can drop them off at the hospital or churches without immunity. Um, I think so, yeah. Up to a certain age. But anyway, no, there's, like, there's a possible active serial killer in Cleveland right now, right? Or, like, several, multiple ones. Three. As the information my sister kept sending to me, yes. And continue to walk your dog alone at night. Yeah, first of all. It was not night, thank you very much. And now I'm just going to walk into town center that I do, because there's no sidewalks around here. Ashley, are you looking for new (laughs) co-hosts? They might be. Do you have an active backup list (laughs) in progress? If you'd like to add your name first, like, you get a bill. Excellent. This recording's not going to make it through this. I only might have a fever or bronchitis. It's fine. Do you still hear babies crying? No. No, I, I'm not hallucinating yet. Did you okay. already start the flu? Is that what you're trying to say? You're no, I'm the kind of person who rejects going to the doctor until, like, you know, I'm dead. Until you've completely destroyed your cat. What's well, the wrong time to do it? <laughs> It's like, it's in between, I, I won't go unless I really need to go. And I was like, once it started yesterday, I was like, oh, it's just my throat. And now I'm just like, nope, this is all in the lungs. Good, good, solid stuff. Mm-mm. Now you can't run from serial killers if you got a lung full of phlegm. Yeah. I do have a German shepherd, though. Yeah, she's the nicest sweet baby angel, though. She's not going to tear anyone's throat out. You come after our family, you want to see? No, I don't really want to I, I have hand bruises to prove it. Okay, anyway. 
What is your theory, Ashley? You never told me your theory. My theory, okay, so my theory ties into your alarmingly large number of possible active serial killers and that episode of either Criminal Minds or Supernatural. My theory is that you probably almost got murdered by a serial killer yesterday. It's not a groundbreaking theory, but it has more credence than might otherwise have. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was definitely a trap. And yeah. the other thing that kind of sold me on it, that it was a trap, is because the way the paths are at that um, park, it, you know, I normally see people like once, unless I see them at the start, or if they're like cross cut skiers, because I can't move that fast. Normally when it's Ooh. snowing, because it's a little harder. Is um, it cross cut ski in a loop? Yeah, it's a mile loop. But, um, okay. And I saw this, I'm pretty sure I saw this guy twice. And that was like kind of weird. And you know, it's, generic white guy middle-aged white guy so i was like ah fuck yeah it's not great uh, yeah i'm pretty sure i just avoided getting murdered so though i did promise like six podcasts that if i got murdered they could cover it so <laughs> you didn't reserve exclusive rights for your own podcast to cover your death well i figured you'll be on all the podcasts ashley that was remarkably overestimating my ability to talk about your demise <laughs> you have enough stories about how i hurt myself so it's fine that's true. You did give me a lot of them. Okay, so we did have one person guess correctly what the topic is. On Twitter, we had uh, the podcast Murder Blows guess correctly. And Mike, would you like to inform everyone what you're talking to us about today? Uh, today, we are going to be doing a collage of stories about the badassery of Andrew Jackson. Nice. And I'm dancing to that because <laughs> that's true. Oh, yeah. That was a pretty good dance. Thanks. We'll just see how feverish I get, and then it'll be fine. I'm definitely <laughs> in a blanket box, so that'll really help. Sweat it out. Yeah, we'll let the sultry sounds of Andrew Jackson's violent <laughs> screaming lull you <laughs> into a state of bliss. I think, like, if you say it, though, it might actually, I might just, like, slowly hal start hallucinating something, so it'll be fine. Oh, don't worry, I'm gonna get way more animated when she actually dig into this. I've definitely sat in on my teaching, I can vouch for that. I'm Not excited, because sure. I really didn't even know from the clue, and I had, like, two <laughs> days advance notice, so... Well, buckle up. I'm okay. Are you done dancing yet? What's happening I was over buckling there? up! Oh, no you have to <laughs> I had to brace myself last week. I did an excellent job for myself. You did do a really good job. I'm and really I, impressed with how much you guys are embracing podcasting as a visual medium. <laughs> Just on the way to get in the mood for a serial killer murder podcast, which we're not really today. Well, I mean, it's Andrew Jackson. He murdered a lot of people. But I was actually listening to one of my favorite songs, Paranoia in B Minor, which is an amazing song, by the way. But it fits. Just paranoid. All the time. People are going <laughs> to get me. One of these times, though, you're not going to be wrong. I that's know. See, I and it only takes one. You only have to be wrong once. I mean, since I've been back home, there have been two times that I've been feared for my life. It's like um, Hitchhiker's Guide to get to the Galaxy. Always bring a towel. That's yes. right. And don't panic. Don't panic. I didn't panic. I stayed yeah. in the seat and was not murdered. <laughs> it was a, probably a very close to actually being murdered. Now I have to just go see if someone was murdered there. Maybe look in the newspapers. Don't yeah, go don't there. Go I'm back. not going there. I'll fuck no. <laughs> You were like, now I have to go look and see. And we were both just sitting there going, mm -mm. no. No, you no. don't. No, we all no, The know. only thing worse than being murdered is being the person that finds the body. I refuse We've to talked be that about person. that. Yeah. Remember? Okay, Andrew Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the YouTube guy was talking about. <laughs> the sidebars? Yeah. You know what? Fuck him. I mean, he's not wrong, but he could have been nicer about it. He put a poop emoji. Who puts that much effort? 13 year olds. Stupid Fred. Fuck you, Fred. <laughs> Andrew Jackson. <laughs> you want to scream it like in the dollop? He did a pretty <laughs> good it's job. It's really right fun. There. January 30th, 1835. Are we ready? No, but go ahead anyway. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, here we go. So, it's January 30th, 1835. A stocky man named Richard Lawrence, an unemployed house painter, approaches a funeral held at the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. South Carolina Representative Warren Davis had just passed away, and a gathering of family, friends, and political allies are arranged for the occasion. Among those present is 67-year-old President of the United States, Andrew Jackson. He is extremely tall and thin, with a slight stoop for being 67, and dressed in black as everyone else's for the occasion. 
As Jackson exits the funeral with the rest of the party, Richard Lawrence approaches, drawing a Derringer pistol from the inside of his jacket and firing at the president from point-blank range. The loud crack of the gun signals as the cap fires, but Jackson appears completely unharmed. He looks stunned, as everyone else does, and more than anyone else, Richard Lawrence, who just watches the president stand there unshot. Completely enraged, the sitting president of the United States charges with blood in his eyes right at Lawrence as Lawrence draws a second pistol. Completely unperturbed at the presence of a gun pointed right at him, Jackson pulls up his heavy wooden walking stick and begins beating the ever-loving crack out of Lawrence with it. The would-be assassin fires his second pistol, but once again, no bullet comes out as he presses it into the president. This only made Jackson angrier. He throws himself on top of Lawrence, brutally beating him with this stick, until finally two other men from the funeral, one of whom is actually Davy Crockett, <laughs> struggle desperately to pull the president off of his attacker before he beats his assassin to death couple things i realized who jackson is he is the hulk you shoot him and he just gets more pissed off that's his secret he is always angry <laughs> i like that the assassin came so prepared though he's like oh just in case my first gun doesn't work i've got this surprise second gun in my coat he's like <laughs> which also didn't work but beside the point preparation is the surprise most part second guns are pretty great well it's amazing that he managed to do such great uh, uh preparation because richard lawrence was a poorly pr person and so badly bloodied incredibly confused and just overwrought richard lawrence is arrested blood streaming from his face uh he was actually the he's kind of a tragic story because uh he was a deeply disturbed individual uh with what today would be diagnosed as severe mentus um he was actually um the reason that he was trying to assassinate andrew jackson is that uh richard lawrence believed himself to be 15th century english king richard iii as you do as, as one you. does and because he's richard iii he was owed payments taxes from his colonies, the president of whom was Andrew Jackson, who had been refusing to answer his letters or pay him as his, his rightful duty to his lord and king, who had died 400 years later. How rude of Jackson not to respond to the emails or those letters. <laughs> <laughs> How rude of him. Uh, you know, you could at least say, hey man, I don't think you're the third, and fuck you. But also thanks for writing. That's how I assume Jackson just signed, if he doesn't like you, he just, that's, it's not Andrew Jackson at the bottom, he just says, fuck it's you. Just in really fancy calligraphy, just, fuck right. you. He pulled out, bring me my best quill. <laughs> Give me the fuck you pen. The gold ink, Jonathan, the gold <laughs> ink. We're fucking someone today. <laughs> and not in usual sense. Oh, if someone finds Andrew Jackson wrote, fuck you, please send it to me and I will get that tattooed somewhere on my body. I would do that. You know what? I would get that tattoo, too. That would be good. Oh, I'd be alright with that. That's a great story, because it not only says fuck you, but it's like, this is Andrew Jackson's handwriting, so it's like a double fuck you. Andrew Jackson was kind of a fuck you to the rest of the world. His entire life was a fuck you. So, Richard Lawrence uh, actually was, after he was arrested, was tried and found guilty. However, he was also found completely mentally disturbed. So he spent the rest of his life in an insane asylum uh, for mentally disturbed people. Uh, however, they actually took the pistols, right? He fired two pistols, both of which operated, but both of which misfired and didn't fire a bullet. So, they tested those pistols afterwards, because someone just tried to kill the president they found that both pistols were in perfect working order and hit targets over 30 feet away with accuracy so was it just really humid that day or no it's just that the bullets were scared of touching andrew jackson <laughs> The odds of two functioning pistols misfiring in a row were set at over 125,000 to one. So the president's a warlock is what you're telling us. The president is just so scary. I just picture the other bullets that were already in Jackson just said, bitches don't, bitches no. <laughs> it was With actually no like, room. No it's room. crowded in here. <laughs> it's like a bullet slum. We don't got no more room! There's no more room! So, 
that was Andrew Jackson, 67 or old. How did we get this crazy president of the United States who flies into the face of danger? So uh, next, I'm just going to give you kind of a, a recap of the early childhood and history of Andrew Jackson. Story time, everyone gather around. Andrew Jackson was the son of a man named Andrew Jackson. He was actually a junior. He was the son of Andrew and Elizabeth Jackson, who were Scotch-Irish immigrants who came to the colonies in the 1760s. Uh, they were essentially poor dirt farmers in Scotland who moved to Ireland and became poor dirt farmers until they decided to move to the colonies to be poor dirt farmers. I now understand why he's so angry, because he's Scots-Irish, and that they just seem like angry people at point but i mean i get why but still he was born angry he probably just popped out angry just like start punched his way through them just like Psh, i'm out i mean god bless his mother probably not the group of people you want to offend with stereotypes though you've already got three serial killers locally i don't know if you need the scotch irish coming after right you don't need any that. more people i love the scottish and i love the irish i'm just saying at that time, that's the stereotype, is that they're angry people. I'm thinking if you have to farm dirt, you'd be a little pissed off, too. I lived in Ireland for a while, and I had a wonderful experience. All of you Irish people, I just want you to know that I'm on your side in this argument. At the end of this, you have to explain how you ended up in France. That's good story. That's a whole episode. you? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's an episode for a whole different time. So... We have two poor dirt farmers living in the Piedmont in the North Carolina Territory with Andrew, his father, desperately trying to eke out, eke out a living on a dirt farm. Uh, he did this until he worked himself to death seven years later, where he had what we believe to be a heart attack or a stroke in the field, leaving Elizabeth pregnant with two young sons. About uh, several months later, a third son named Andrew was born in March 15th of 1767. He was born and named after his now recently deceased father. So Andrew grew up fatherless, a young boy in the outbacks of the American frontier uh, with basically no other male uh, member of the family to take on a paternal role. Add to this the fact that he had no education. Well, he did have an education, but a very minimal one, one that he did not excel at. Basically, it consisted of reading, writing, and what was called casting accounts, which today would basically be addition and subtraction. So he's alone in the woods with two older brothers and a mother who uh, is desperately trying to keep track of all of them. Leashes. Oh, uh, yeah. It's good put, stuff. Just put child leashes on all of them. It'll be fine. Oh, yeah. If yeah. a bear comes, you're a little fucked, though. Just when you walk them, make sure that you don't walk towards the baby noises in the woods. Right. I, was, I was trying to bite back the comment about alone in the woods. Sounds a lot like Courtney's story from the <laughs> beginning of the episode. Maybe it was the ghost of Andrew Jackson. Is he in Ohio? Who knows? Oh my goodness. I feel like so he's in Tennessee. Of Ohio, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Andrew would never get away from this feeling the effects of the lack of education. Uh, and one of his earliest biographers named James Parsons stated, Ignorance was a wall around him, high and impenetrable. What a great biographer. <laughs> He, he was imprisoned been... in his ignorance and sometimes raged around his little dim enclosure like a tiger in his den. Keep in mind, this is one of his friends. A different kind of ivory tower. Yeah, I'm not going to say <laughs> what I want to say right now because we're apolitical, but if you know those drinking the tea gifts, that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> literally. So literally drinking tea. So, with no major father figure and a largely patriarchal, patriarchal society, the main influence on young Andrew was his mother. Later in life, Andrew described her Elizabeth, gentle as a dove, brave as a lioness. Andrew loved his mom. So Explains she, a lot. Right. She was a tough lady, and she had to be to survive everything she did. So she had a few major things in her life. She was religious, rigor rigorously religious. She put a great emphasis on personal honor, moral rectitude, and manliness. She taught Andrew to never steal, never lie, or to sue anybody. You don't sue people when they dishonor you. Oh, no, no, no. You have to settle this upon, quote, the field of honor. Meaning you had to shoot a bitch. <laughs> Direct quote. <laughs> we need our we need our flags. From an early age, Andrew was taught that dueling was the only way to settle disputes of personal honor, which was a fairly common way of looking at the world for the period uh, and the area that they lived in. So 
On top of this, his mom had a dreadful enmity towards Indians. And that is a direct quote. <laughs> I, I don't I don't think that's foreshadowing at all. Andrew nah. Jackson? No nah. oh boy. <laughs> I thought nah. he loved the Native Americans. I mean, there definitely isn't physical about him where there's a whole musical number where he tricks natives from their land. It's uh it's a fraught history. <laughs> Sir. So He's brought up in a household that has a dreadful enmity towards Indians, uh, which actually seems to have resulted from claims that uh, an actual kinsman of his mother was killed by Indians. So she brought her sons up to hate Indians as well. Uh, this was during a period of continual, sporadic strife with several tribes over land and horse theft and murders and raiding parties. All white children of this period in this area of region of time uh, would have been brought up from an early age knowing about the dangers of Native Americans. But it seems from writings for family members that Elizabeth and her children in particular both hated and feared them. So this fatherless, uneducated young man uh, who was brought up emphasizing fighting and a hatred of Indians, you can imagine uh, what fun he was when he turned into a teenager. Probably great at parties, though. Oh, probably great. Oh. Oh, he was. <laughs> he seems like he's starting. I mean, I don't know if there's a head wound or tor like I'm just the violence of super religious mother makes me think of serial <laughs> killers. Same thing. I was like, man, is there a triad for serial killers' moms? Because she needs to nail it right now. Super I mean, religious. He's su like the answer is violence. I mean, don't know if he wet the bed. A lot of toxic animals, masculinity but I'm floating around. Bet out there. The torturing animals happen. I mean, that was probably just called hunting. <laughs> Hey, man, what, what happens in the frontier stays in the frontier. Hey, Andrew, uh, your rabbit isn't very much meat anymore. What's up with that? Yes, all that fur got in the way of the fun times. Man. So, one of my favorite stories, and this is a quick one, from when he was a young man, this uh, chivalrous, uh, violent, uh, hellion of a child. So a bunch of boys get together, and they think it'll be a funny idea to load a musket with powder all the way up to the muzzle. And, uh, Accurate. That's pretty to show, funny. Right? Right? And then you go to fire the gun, and there's so much powder in it that it knocks you on your ass because it's overloaded. So uh, they, they, they're they like, who are we going to give it to? And Andrew's like, I'll shoot a gun. I love shooting guns. So they give it, to, and they're like, uh, no, that's that's cool, Andrew. You, and he's like, no, give me the gun. So he fires it, and it knocks him on his ass, right? And he gets up, and he's holding the mu musket by the, like, by the stock in the barrel. He says, if anyone laughs, I will murder you. And so you have this, like, group of 12, 13-year-old boys standing there in complete silence, watching the rage behind Andrew Jackson's face. Can we just talk about how he's holding the part that's super hot because it was a recently fired metal object? <laughs> he probably didn't even get scars from it. He's Seriously. probably just, like, perfectly healed just fueled by his rage. I thought he was gonna beat everyone's ass. Like, they were all just gonna run because he was just gonna beat them to death. I mean, he literally was going to kill someone if they at him. He was going to murder them. Um, my favorite, one of my favorite descriptions of him was done by uh, one of his best biographers, a guy named Robert Ramini. So if you want to read a great series of biographies on Andrew Jackson, Robert Ramini is probably my top pick. He uh, describes young Andrew Jackson as, quote, a fighting cock all his life. He was very kind to the hens who clucked around him, but a savage killer towards any other cock who dared to cross him. I really hope he continues with the chicken metaphor, because otherwise this podcast just got so much more explicit. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, you want to know the best thing is? He would actually do it. You know, now a lot of, like, Certain people are saying things, and you're you want to sometimes be like, either shut up or put up. You know, please do it. Please do do it. <laughs> do it. At this point, we're all so fed up. We're just like fucking do it. <laughs> Karen, you've been bitching about doing this for six years. Karen, just fucking do it. God, Karen, your shit together. <laughs> I let you know where I pull pulled Karen from. Yeah, I got you. That poor Karen. She had no idea how many gifts went from that. Oh. How many times I would receive the same one from you? Just over yeah. and over. It's my favorite gift. Karen, get your shit together, Karen! Alright, so Andrew Jackson kills Karen. So Andrew then... Jackson <laughs> murders Karen because Karen handed him a loaded musket. And uh, now we get to the part of the story where everyone dies. Are we ready for the part of the story where everyone dies? The good part. Yep, let's go. <laughs> 
Andrew Jackson is 14 years old. The year is 1781. The American Revolution is in full swing, and it's not going great. What? Especially in the American South, where uh, British armies are cramping across the territory. So, Andrew, at 14, decides, well, my brother's in the military, and my uncles are in the military. I should probably go to join the military, too. So he joins the Revolutionary War, acting as a scout and a messenger for revolutionary forces, uh, because he knew the backwoods of North Carolina so well, right? He was a young rapscallion that was trapsing upon all of these lands, and so he made a great messenger running back and forth between troop formations. So, uh, many of Jackson's family, including his older brother, Hugh, had joined the revolution, and uh, yeah, it's not going great. He gets a letter that his brother Hugh dies of heat exhaustion because he wasn't allowed to fight in a battle, and he had gotten sick uh, and uh, passed away. So, him and his other brother, Robert, are now running messages for revolutionary officers. However, they get ambushed by British troops and overwhelmed. Him and his brother are taken prisoner and uh, captured by British forces who uh, take them in a house. And the British officer decides that he's going to use this as his camp for the night. So he orders young 14-year-old Andrew Jackson to polish his boots because he's being a little shit. And Andrew Jackson looks the British officer who has just captured him and murdered everyone else in the face uh, and says to him, I'm a prisoner, I'm not a servant. Polish your own boots. The British officer responded to this by drawing his saber and swinging it at Andrew Jackson's face. Andrew Jackson's reaction to having a saber swung at his face is to hold his left hand up and to catch the blade with his hand. It cuts his hand and also catches him in the face, leaving a permanent scar across his forehead that he would be self-conscious about for the rest of his life. Harry Potter? What? Uh-huh. <laughs> a less awesome Harry Potter story. For real. I'm just really looking for things to back up by Andrew Jackson as a wizard comment from earlier. <laughs> it's only gonna- it's only gonna- Yes. Okay. So- I mean, the British officer also had a British accent, like Voldemort. See? I'm not wrong on this. <laughs> <laughs> Corny's just dying. I haven't oh, talked up a lot yet. For good. Don't worry, I just toss it aside. If you do, hold it up for the camera. <laughs> Real proud. Oh, look. Did he murder this dude in his sleep? Oh. And no. strangle him with his boots, because that would be awesome. <laughs> you just nod him from the toes up to the nape of his neck. God, can you imagine that ghost? So it, Andrew, Andrew Jackson does not shove boots down the British officer. Got it. No, instead, as punishment for the uh, insubordination of not dying when he was supposed to, he had his boots taken away and was marched for 40 miles barefoot to the prisoner of war camp. I'm where he and his brother here? both contracted smallpox. I feel Sounds like fair. this plays out later in his life. Oh, man. Does he have janky feet forever? Uh, I'm sure he's got a lot. He's got janky everything. He's just a He's like Logan from X-Men. He's just his collection <laughs> of scars and battered body parts. So his mother, Elizabeth, who, by the way, by all accounts, is a total badass, rides 40 miles alone out to a British prisoner of war camp to yell at the British officers to give her sons back. Yes. And they do. Wouldn't you? If you saw a woman by herself, she probably had a gun or something that she goes, just starts berating. You just want her to shut the fuck up. I would be more afraid if she didn't have a gun and she still had the balls to ride up and berate an entire prisoner of war camp. I mean, this is the woman that made Andrew Jackson. Right. She is no kitten. She probably had an iron <laughs> uterus. She is a lioness. <laughs> She's a lioness with an iron uterus at this point. <laughs> So she she ransoms her sons. Her his brother Robert is dying of smallpox, so he rides on the horse with his mom back, and Andrew has to walk another forty miles barefoot back home. <laughs> I got this. And I would walk five hundred miles. I would walk five hundred because I got stuck in a prisoner of war camp and like a dumbass and died and nearly died. Also by a Scottish group. Just throwing that. Yeah. Out. <laughs> When they get home, Robert dies almost immediately. As one does. Uh, 
as one does, Andrew <laughs> nearly dies, takes a month to recover. Then, once he's recovered, gets out of bed and hears that his cousins were sent to a prisoner of war camp because they were captured by the British. 14-year-old Andrew Jackson, just recovered from smallpox after being sent to a prisoner of war camp and nearly being decapitated by a British officer whose brother just died, uh, decides, you know, I should probably just go back to that prisoner of war camp and rescue everybody. So he turns to his mom and tells her what the plan is. And Elizabeth, again, being a hardcore badass, says, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Probably should have thought of that earlier before we came all the way back. <laughs> Seriously, she just hung around a little while longer. Wait for the inspiration to strike. You'd be fine. Family dinners must have been great. She probably just threw slabs of meat at them. Just eat it. I imagine that the only utensils used at the table were steak knives. Not even steak knives, actual hunting knives. Just for real. Straight up barbarians, no silverware at all. Hands. So, Andrew leaves to go rescue everybody and be a hero. Again, 14 years old. Uh, and gets a note that about a week later, his mother died of smallpox. I, I don't know why I feel like smallpox comes up later in the story. is gonna come back to this moment. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. seeing a pattern here. Also, so, did not think it was possible for his mother to die. Yeah, I, I thought that she was, would just punch death in the face. I was pretty she sure had, she's still around. Oh man, she had actually gone out to help other prisoners uh, who had, had contracted smallpox and got it herself and passed away, unfortunately. So to recap, Andrew is 14 years old. His older brother, Hugh, is dead. His older brother, Robert, is also dead. His mother is dead. His father has always been dead. And he is scarred across the face and is alone in a brutal backwoods uh, guerrilla war with the most powerful army in the world. <coughs> Harry Potter. <clears throat> I don't have time to do an entire history of Andrew <laughs> Jackson, but uh, I wanted to make sure that you guys had a full understanding of exactly what kind of a crucible made a person that marches at his assassin while drawing two pistols and doesn't blink an eye. Can he blink, though? That is the question. Well, his stare was actually, like, re reputed. He had these steely blue eyes that would just bore into you with hellfire. Fair enough. I think he just, he absorbed his mother's soul at that point, and just, like, was, she couldn't fight off death any longer. She's like, Andrew, I will give you my power, and we will just kill death as many times as we can. Just be like, pew, 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 pew. With the Wonder Woman coughs motion? That's how yeah. they're doing it? Okay. I mean, he's getting shot at a lot, so I just assume that's going to be the best motion. That's I mean, fair. All right. Yeah. I'm sure his, his arms deflect bullets. Not Which very well. Actually, so many next, of them inside of him. Well, the next story is about that, exactly. <laughs> how, how poorly his body deflects bullets. <laughs> Wait, your body is not supposed to, like, allow bullets in? I thought everyone's body deflects bullets. Only Washington's did. Oh, okay. Washington was known many times to walk directly into his own men's line of fire as they were shooting, and he just walked away totally fine. Do you think it's because his man men were, like, shitting their pants like, shit, if I shoot watch Washington, how fucked am I? I mean, it also doesn't hurt that w the phrase hit the broadside of a barn was literally written about muskets from this period. <laughs> I thought my mom made that up. That's pretty good. All right. Nope. The accuracy oh, yeah. was so poor that, like, the like you could actually miss a barn? Yeah. I'm learning new things today. I like it. Mm -hmm. Alright. And so you got Kentucky Long Rifle, which was the greatest revolution in military hardware of its age. It's good stuff. All of you gun nuts out there that want to yell at me about why that's incorrect, please leave a comment below. Right. We'll just forward them to you. We're just gonna ignore whatever they say, let you answer. Do you want to hear a story about Andrew getting a bullet inside of him? Yes. I, I just assume that he just absorbs them. Like a magnet? Um, just draws them to him? Yeah, yeah. His heart's a magnet because it's so cold. Oh, man. <laughs> this is like a comic book that's writing itself. <laughs> okay. How did Andrew Jackson get a ton of bullets, one preferably named Fred, inside of him? <laughs> so, I don't know if you're going to find this very hard to believe, but Andrew Jackson being hardened by war as a child and obsessed with personal honor, was involved in a lot of duels. What? No. More than Weird. any other president. Weird. In fact, there's no clear count on how many duels he actually took part in. The lowest estimate that I've seen is five, which I think <laughs> is low. And the highest estimate that I've seen is over 117. 
That's a I'm wide margin for error. I'm yeah. I mean, <laughs> I like you people. So one of the most famous of these duels was with a man named uh, Charles Dimson, and uh, at the time, uh, uh, Dickerson. Excuse me. At the time, both men were lawyers in Nashville, Tennessee. So this was, as any good duel in Tennessee is, a duel over a horse race bet. <laughs> Jackson had placed a bet on a horse race and Dickerson's cousin was in charge of getting the money for the horse race. And there was something about like who got the money or whether the money was being paid out. And so they got in a fight and then they got Dickerson involved and then Jackson and Dickerson got in a fight for like months. They would just like, it was like one of those things where like they would walk down the street and one of them would be walking over and, and like Jackson would seem like, Hey, Hey, where's my money, asshole? And then they just like <laughs> start yelling at each other. It's like when you like see someone that you hate in the grocery store and they cart like, like take their cart and they make like a beeline for you. You're like, oh, shit's going down. So it actually came to a head when Dickinson took out a full ad in the newspaper specifically to call Andrew Jackson an asshole. I Why mean do we not live back then? That is our era right there. You can I, buy personal ads in the newspaper. I want I want to. True. I gotta find someone I hate that much to take out a personal ad that large. Well, when you do, you should make a point of calling him, quote, a worthless scoundrel, a poltroon, and a coward. Yes. I, w I would do it now just because no one's gonna know what a poltroon is, and it'll be even funnier. They're like, you called me a what? And they have to, like, get out their dictionary to look out how much of a dick you just called them. Right. I love it. That's a good idea. Also, Siri, define poltroon. Um, can we please talk about the fact that Andrew Jackson was a lawyer? Could you imagine being his client? Oh, hell Actually, yeah. yeah, that archetype, that fits with a lot of them. Oh, there's several stories like, of him getting into duels with people because they beat him in the law court, and he was so mad that they used his arguments against him that he shot the guy that he was arguing against. I mean, it's fair. It's fair. I can point. think of a couple of lawyers off the top of my head who would probably do the same thing today if it weren't <laughs> illegal. So, Jackson, reading the newspaper, sees the ad and decides, okay, this bitch has got to die. <laughs> Direct, Direct quote! quote. <laughs> <laughs> there is a problem, however. Dickinson is widely regarded as one of the best marksmen in the, in the state of Tennessee. And because Jackson is challenging him to a duel in the rules of formal dueling, the challenged party gets to pick the weapons. So, of course, he picks pistols. So, here's how a standard duel goes. Two guys meet up. They have their seconds, right, which are the people that are, will be there to honor the duel if they die. And uh, they line up back to back, march for however many steps are determined, turn, and fire at each other. That's what a standard duel looks like. We've all seen the pictures. Think of the song from Hamilton. Carry it in my head mm -hmm. right now. <laughs> right. And then just imagine people better at shooting than Hamilton and Burr. Right. <laughs> so, you walk the distance, the shot is called, you turn, you fire at the same time, attempting to kill each other. That's how a duel goes. Here's how a duel with Andrew Jackson goes. <laughs> Do they just have a handbook? It's like duels the rules jackson style you know like you can play different card games like different there's like, right there's like the rules and then it's like x'd out in red pen and it says jackson the jackson style, bring me my one page, pen. and it just says there are no rules that's it that's the only rule you open the book and it just says in gold ink fuck boys <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> someone please make that i would love it i would probably frame it keep it forever bury it with me. Oh wait, I'm gonna be a tree. Never mind. So, Jackson pulls out his his version of dueling rules with just fuck bullets. Fuck everyone. So, Jackson and Dickerson, back to back, they take the steps out. They turn to fire at each other. Dickerson, one of the best shots in the state, fires. As the smoke clears, he sees Andrew Jackson standing there clutching his chest. Andrew Jackson looks him dead in the eye blood pumping from between his fingers as he straightens himself back up, eyes blazing, points his pistol at Dickerson and shoots him dead on the spot. I'm, I'm pretty sure he is the Hulk at this point, or his mother's spirit is inside of him, just fueling his rage. Oh my gosh. Jackson is taken to a doctor who finds that Dickerson's shot has shattered two of his ribs and is lodged so close to his heart that they can't operate on him. 
he will have that lead ball in the middle of his chest. This is not a bullet. This is a lead ball. Those things are destructive. Put in the middle of his chest, stuck there for the rest of his life, causing him severe pain until he dies. Probably also lead poisoning. I mean, probably to some degree. Who knows how much lead poisoning he had from the bullets stuck in his body? Maybe that's why he can't, he, it just didn't kill him anymore. There's just so much lead that it's like, the, all the leads looking at each other like, shouldn't he be dead? Should, this dude should be dead now. No, I swear, he survived on force of will for about 57 to 67 years. Oh, yeah. So, Sounds about right. Yeah, if you want to compare him to a comic book character, I think the apt one would be Tony Stark, who also had pieces of metal stuck next to his heart for the whole life. That is, he is just all the superheroes in some way, probably except for Captain America, just because Captain America is too nice. It's too pure. I mean, Captain America liked killing Nazis. Oh my god, could... Could you imagine Andrew Jackson killing Nazis? He'd be yes. like glorious bastards, but he'd be like, do you bear with a baseball bat just going through killing them that way? Just for <laughs> fun. One. I feel like Quentin Tarantino would have cut down Andrew Jackson's Nazi hunting movie because of gratuitous violence. Yeah, probably. He he would like someone who would actually like he'd like probably get a hole in someone and then just rip them apart because he wanted to. Oh my Jesus gosh. Jesus God. <laughs> gonna haunt my nightmares tonight thank you it's not the most graphic thing i've said that's haunting your nightmares no due to some unforeseen circumstances uh part of our audio was lost and thus we're going to have a two-part episode with mike so look forward to more andrew jackson stories in the next episode it should be really fun if you have any suggestions make sure to tweet at us right on our wall. Anything you'd like. Okay, thanks. So, this week's podcast corner is Marble Orchard, and it is it explores murders and mysteries of the American Southwest. They've covered aliens, they covered oh, my favorite series, they did Tombstone in three episodes. They talk about like the evolution up to the OK Corral and all that. It's a real good listen. You're definitely listening to that after we're done talking. Welcome to the promo for the Marble Orchard Podcast, the weekly podcast that explores emerging mysteries of the American Southwest, hosted by me, Prickly Pete, and my co-host, Faye Daniel. And we're not just another true crime podcast, we also discuss history, unexplained events, and local monsters. You can find the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or your favorite podcast listening app. Thanks, Mike, for being on. Um... Thank you for listening to The Cult of Domesticity. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Chorus, Spotify, YouTube, and Podbean. If we're not on your preferred app, are you a ghost? If you are, please don't haunt us. But let us know what kind of app you like to listen on so we can fix that. And rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or whatever listening method you use to help spread the word. Also, we were, we're not, you don't waterboard people to listen to us, okay? We'll try to not promise that. I mean, that's only what Ashley told me to say. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter at Domestic Podcast and at The Cult of Domesticity on Instagram to get the episode tip off, recipe of the week, and additional information about the week's topics. You can also find our podcast merch, which is now a thing, on Threadless by searching for The Cult of Domesticity. And if you're feeling particularly generous, we've set up a tip jar on PayPal. Finally, to suggest a recipe or topic, email us at domesticpodcast@gmail.com. Hey listeners, we're a part of a really amazing indie pod campaign called Two Pods a Day. So if you want to find some new and interesting podcasts outside of your normal reach, I suggest you check it out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Seriously, I found probably about 10 new favorites from this campaign. High fives all around? High five.